three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Peter Wiles Show. Uh, today, we're going to go into a little bit more about the behind the scenes of a racing driver. And uh, there's a racing driver asked me to talk about setting up a racing car. Now, I'm going to try and keep this actually... I'm going to give you some couple of stories behind the scenes of how bad some drivers are setting up cars. Like, guys, you wouldn't believe how many drivers out there don't have a fucking clue how to set up a car. It's insane. There's even Formula One drivers out there that don't have a clue how to set up a car. Because most of the work has done before, before them. Years and years of other drivers in the teams learning how setup works and learning how this works. Or the main engineer knows what to do. Are they at least they have an idea if they're not getting enough feedback from a driver they have an idea okay well let's try this now right I mean guys you have to remember 20 years ago they had the technology in Formula One where they can drive a Formula One track around a track on its own now did I say that right I think I did they have the technology 20 years ago to drive a Formula One car around a racing track on its own. Now, if they can, can do that, they can certainly help with controlling the car, handling-wise, all so sorts of things. Okay, now of course it comes down to the driver too, where he needs to give some input too. Well, hopefully he can, because at least that'll just speed up things. But, you know, guys and girls, you wouldn't believe how many guys don't know how to set up a car. I would say it's probably about 35 to 40 percent don't even know what understeer is now an oversteer like they know what it is in theory but they they get it confused sometimes they might get it every now and then that's right but some of them don't even get it they don't fucking get it and they just drive on now i mean guys that might sound insane what i'm about to say but it's the truth and if you don't want to believe me, that's okay. If you do believe me, that's okay too. It's no problem. I just know from my years and years at it, it is disturbing what they don't know. Like, understeer guys, basically, right? Uh, actually, no. Do you know what? I'm going to give you a little pointer, guys. One thing you should do, if this is all guys and girls, if you've got a road car, Number one, to maintain your car, right? Because everybody has to get that. Well, if you're living in Ireland, yeah, there's this NCT. Um, I don't know what it is called in America, or Canada, or <clears throat> excuse me, anywhere else, uh, if they even have one. But, you know, to maintain your car very well, guys, what I would suggest you do, and this is such a small little thing, put it into your reminder on your phone once a, once a month. Check your tire pressures and your oil in the car. Two simple, simple, basic things that you can do for your own use, right? Now, look, the oil, it's not a big thing. And, you know, if there's anybody that doesn't know how to do it, well, look, I'm sure you can, you, you can YouTube it, all right? It's really easy, okay? Um, tire pressures in a car, very easy too. And I would suggest, guys, and to be honest, <clears throat> If you got a, either way, whether you've got a, let's say, I don't know, a car, a motorbike, a van, I would be putting your tire pressures at 40 on the front and 42 or 44 on the back. Okay? 40, 40 on the front, on both front and left. And on the back, 42, 42 or 44, 44. They're ideal pressures for your tires. And again, if you don't know how to do that, YouTube it, okay? But honestly, guys, if you wanna keep a, a good maintenance on your car every year, checking the oil and the tire pressures is a very, very important thing. The oil, because obviously that's like, um, it's kinda of like drinking water, you know? Your, water just keeps you going. It, it, it keeps you hydrated, right? Checking the tire pressures is like, I suppose, how would you compare it? It's kind of like making sure that your runners that you have for walking long walks or running, you have enough sole and grip in the, in, in the shoes, right? You don't want them wearing out, okay? Anyway, so most important, I would say, is that um, 
if you are setting up a, a racing car, right? This is a request from your man is that the most important thing you do is is you you work on mechanical grip. Now, mechanical grip would be shocks, the suspension, the tires, the ride height. Okay, that's your mechanical grip. Aerodynamical grip is, and I'm sure most people have seen this in Formula One or other racing cars that you've got the the wings on it, the front and back. All right, so that's the aerodynamical grip. But the most important, your ideal dream scenario for any car is to have maximum mechanical grip and minimum aerodynamical grip. All right, maximum mechanical. And that's, you know, like I said, the, the shock, suspension, tires, ride height. You want to max that out and work on that as much as you can. And then at the end, okay, mechanical, aerodynamical grip. But really, you don't want to be relying on aerodynamics. You don't. Like this is the ideal scenario. You'll never get to a stage where you've got maximum mechanical grip and zero aerodynamics. That's not, never going to happen. But that's the perfect perfect goal every time you get in the car because at least you've got a starting point right and remember you'll never get there but it's the perfect this is what I need to get to right and once you have that in mind things get a lot easier then because you know the direction you know the path that you need to go right so even if things are getting fucked up in the car you know ah well actually no I need to keep working on mechanical da -da -da, you know um, and like guys and I remember uh, like I used to work in mechanical grip a hell of a lot, and I remember even in um, in America, I was was I was testing on a we did a test day from nine to five. I must have done about two hundred laps in the car that day, and my teammate was there as well, French Canadian guy. Now he was really quick, but he didn't have a clue how to set up a car, and for some reason, I was going around and around and around and around testing these new parts for the car. Everything was going good. Um, what else? And then I just went going around and around, getting more notes. Okay, look, this is this setup on this is really good, so we could use this for another track or X Y Z A B C. This fucker's sitting in the car asleep at one stage when I'm driving around. I couldn't believe it. I was like, why is he sitting in this fucking car? Does he not give a shit? Basically, I was doing all the setup for us, and I only realized that halfway through the day, and I wasn't happy as you can imagine. Um, so. And I was working on the mechanical grip. So like mechanical grip is so uber important. And you know what, guys? You, you'd be frightened to know how little, the, even a lot, not everybody, a lot of the F1 drivers have no idea about how setting up a car is. You'd be frightened to know how little they know. Some of these guys can barely tell the difference between understeer and fucking oversteer. And look, guys, that's not me having a go at them. This is just the hard facts. Like, I know how to set up a car, right? Luckily, I was fortunate and I was good at it. But you know the thing? I, wasn't getting, I never gave myself a pat on the back because that's what, exactly what I should know what I'm doing. There's no pat on the back for knowing how a car is set up. Nothing. That's your fucking job. I mean, it's this understeer and oversteer is so simple. It's like asking an accountant, hey, accountant, can you, can you add 137 plus 240? Okay? No problems. It's really, really straightforward. Now, maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but guys, it is this simple. It's frightening how much some of these guys don't know or how little they don't know or how little they know <laughs> Jeez, I don't even know how to speak at the moment Jesus Christ there you go for me anyway <laughs> but like yeah guys I mean it's um, you've got multi multi million dollar teams in Formula 1 and they've been at it for so long that like the basics always stay the same so you never you never go too far left or too far right of the basics anyway throughout the years so you'll have, like the teams will always have a certain an adjustment that they'll make, right? So they'll go, okay, if we can't figure this one out, what we know from experience here is we can try A, B, C this time, not X, Y, Z. 
They're taking out their, their pocketbook, their, their toolbox, right? Their experience is all in, in their computers and their technology. It's amazing. Um, so the mechanical grip is the most important. And you're looking at like, even with the shock suspension, you've got your bump and rebound, right, from the shocks. Bump is when the weight, of the weight is going forward down towards the ground. Rebound is the reverse, coming back up. So how does the car react when, you're, when you've got the bump and then the rebound? Do you, do you have more bump because the rebound is way too much and then the rebound comes, comes back up too much, all of a sudden the car gets, gets loose, right? So then maybe you have to have less rebound. I mean, it's, once you get into it, it's so much, it's so much fun. Um, and then you've got the, you've got camber and caster right i mean camber and caster is playing with the direction of the the tires themselves right where camber is uh okay if you can see me on video i'm going to try and explain this probably a bit better uh, but camber is putting the the tires at an angle okay um so what would you say I'm trying to explain it here it's pushing the top of the wheel in towards the car so the bottom of the wheel comes out and the the bottom of the tire pushes out if that makes sense so it's lopsided a bit now you can go back and forth either direction but what camber does then as well is if you have uh you need to most of the time you need to put on camber in your car your racing car because um and again i suppose you're, you could say the default of that would the camber again i would look Go back to the first example. The top of the tire is facing in and the bottom of the tire is facing out, if you can imagine that, right? So actually, do you know what I just thought? Maybe on like an, on, a, on a clock, it would be, uh, what would it be? 25 past 11? That angle, if that makes sense, okay? So the point of that is that when you're on the track, the whole tire is like if you're sitting in the pit lane and you're you're ready to go but you haven't taken off yet when you're sitting there there's a part of the tire that's not sitting on the ground properly right it's it's a little off because you've got the camber on the car right but the point is this excuse me when you're on the track you've got aerodynamics now pushing the car down to to the ground so what happens then is if you've got enough camber on the wing pushes the car to the ground, therefore the tire is now flat on the ground, which therefore technically gives you more grip, right? Um, so then you, you, know, you obviously play around with that. Um, so if you're ever watching Formula One, you can see the way the, the tires are, let's call it bent out of shape. That's why, right? So if you're sitting in the pit line, you can see that there's a bit of the tire up in the air and you're wondering, geez, what's that all about? Okay, now, when they're on the track, aerodynamics, aerodynamics pushes the car, gravity, wind pushes the car to the ground. Therefore, it evens out the tire on the track. So like, there's a huge amount of um, setup in, in the camera. I mean, it's so cool, like it's, it's so much fun. Um, then you've got caster, which is working uh, the other way. So the tires going in or out of the car if that makes sense um so again you'd be playing around with that you got toe in toe out kind of the all sort of the same family there um where you have the tires pointing in right technically sometimes give you more grip but then it actually fucked the grip up too you might have too much grip or the tires just get worn out too quick too quick um and then you've got the aerodynamics which is very cool um you've got the aerodynamics which is uh yes it gives you grip but what it does is it, it just sucks you to the ground. So sometimes the problem can be that if you've got too much aerodynamics on the car and it's pushing you to the ground too much, it can actually affect a problem that you have already in the car. So if you've got understeer in the car, it can actually make the understeer worse, depending, like it's, it's amazing the way, it's fucking fascinating the way it can fuck things up. Because in theory, the aerodynamics is going to help the car, right? When you get when it sucks you to the ground, but actually sometimes it can make the car worse. 
<laughs> it's unreal. Like, um, I mean, I'll put it this way. Like, sometimes with, with racing, and just, this is just before I go, sometimes with racing, illogic is logic. Right, I mean, I'll put, I remember I was I was racing in Formula Ireland in in obviously here in Ireland, and they were um, so they're single seater cars. Uh, they do about 100 and, 175, 170, I think, uh, maybe one hundred and seventy. So um, and they've got wings on the car, and unfortunately, the car was just not balanced right. So we tried every fucking thing in the world, and for some reason. My engineer thought of something. And we were sitting there, we, and it was, unfortunately, this was actually our last round of the year, and a typical, it took us to the, to the end of the year to figure out what the problem was and how to fix it. So nothing made sense. As in, you know, if we do ABC, we should get more grip, but we were, go, we were, we were getting less grip. Okay, so if we put on less wing, we'll go quicker on the straight. But actually, we weren't going quicker on the straight. It was, it defied logic. This car, so we realized that the car was actually too light of petrol. Now, in theory, if a car has less fuel in it, it's going to go quicker, right? In theory, and I can't give you a percentage, but ninety-nine percent of the time, it's going to be like that. All right, um, huh, probably more. But we realized that the more fuel we put in the car, the heavier the car will be and the faster we will go. We actually needed more fuel in the car to get that last bit of grip. So even out of all my fucking years of experience of, of racing a fucking car, now we didn't have the technology back in those days, so maybe that could have helped us then, but we didn't, right? But, and even for my engineer, and he was around for a long time as well, let me tell you. None of us could figure out what the fuck. And he went, hang on a second. And I could, I'll, I'll never forget him. He just starts laughing. He went, I actually think, Peter, we should put more weight into the car. And I went, you mean more fuel? He goes, I actually think that might fix our problem. And we started laughing. We went, Jesus Christ, okay. Um, do you really think this is going to help, Brian? And he was like... Only one way to find out. And it actually did. So like, you know, out of all the logic in the world, you could be the greatest car, car engineer, you could be the greatest driver that can set up a, a, a racing car, and yet something will come along someday and just mind boggle you. Because there's no way that car should have been faster. The more fuel you put in a car, the heavier it is. The heavier the car is, the slower it's going to go. Because if the heavier, the, if, the, if the car is heavier, once you get on the accelerator, it obviously it takes more, pr uh, more weight to get up to speed, right? It you know, makes sense, right? If you're running against somebody and they're your 10 stone, and, uh, they're, let's say, sorry, they're your, your 70 kilos, they're 90 kilos, well, it's gonna be a lot fucking heavy. It's gonna be a lot harder for the 90 kilo person to, to lift off, sprint off, you know? So anyway, <laughs> I hope that helps uh, my buddy out there that wants to, to kind of learn about stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so guys, listen, thanks for listening, and I will be back. Cheers.